Do you know someone who is hurting right now? Maybe it's you. In whom or what are you putting your hope for healing? How can the ruined places in your life be renewed? One word, Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Jesus is hope and life. And he said, I love what he said in uh, Luke chapter 4. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. Somebody say good news. Good news. Yes. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Somebody say, favor ain't fair. <laughs> it's his favor. It's just not, it's not earned. It's just his favor. So good. Jesus has a good news anointing. Yeah. Just let that sink in. I don't know what you think of Jesus or how you think he is or how you think God is, but God is about good news. Je Jesus said that the devil's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy you. But Jesus said, but I've come that you would have a rich and satisfying life. Not necessarily talking about rich in the pocketbook, but a, an abundant life, a life full of life, a life full of God, a life with hope and peace and joy, the things that you need in life. Jesus has a good news anointing. Matthew, one of the writers that, that, told, that wrote about Jesus' life, wrote in chapter 12, and his name, Jesus, will be the hope of all the world. How's that for a nickname? What's your nickname? Like, you might be, you know, like Shorty or, you know, Slugger or, or something. Jesus' nickname is the hope of all the world. That is an awesome, awesome name. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Somebody say the life. life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Jesus is hope and life. Jesus is. That is so cool, and that is so awesome, and I just came today to tell you, if you need hope, it's in Jesus. If you need your life renewed, it's in Jesus. He's the one. He's the answer. He's what you've been searching for, but I, I feel like I should try this other thing. Just try Jesus. Start there. Start following him, and see if your hope and life quotient doesn't just shoot up. It will. It will. I love it. Earlier this very year, our church changed our name. And we sought the Lord. We actually prayed about this for about two years. It was a long time. Through a couple of January fasting and prayers, we, we were praying about this new name. And, and we believe God gave us our new name this year, Hope and Life Church. And I, there, I just... I, every time I, I hear it, I just feel fresh. I just feel like, wow, encouraged. I'm so glad God gave us this name. Hope and Life Church, uh, that's, that's awesome. And one of the things I love about this name for our church is that it, it's, it applies to so many different things. First of all, it applies to Jesus. So every time we say, it's like saying Jesus Church, not, not Jesus' only congregation. That's not what I mean. I mean, it's a church built on Jesus. It's a church about Jesus, a church where you can find Jesus. He is hope and life, and this is hope and life church. This is Jesus Church. That's so great. But it also describes what we have received in Jesus. Faith is the reality of, of what we hope for, and our hope is in Jesus. We have received hope. We've received life, life now and life eternal in Jesus. We've received that. So I love that our church name describes that. But also, as if that were not enough, this describes hope and life is what we have to offer to everybody, all the people around us, all the people that we come in contact with. Hope and life, there is hope for you. There's life for you. And not just life like ticking off the days on the calendar, but life, real life, full life, abundant life, hopeful life for you in Jesus. 
This past summer, Pastor Shelley and I just set a couple of days aside as a prayer retreat. And we were just seeking the Lord for just God's direction for the next season of our life. By next season, I don't, I don't mean like the fall. I mean, what's the next era of Hope and Life Church to be about? Where are you leading us? Where are you taking us? Where, where do you want us to go, Lord, as a church? And so we prayed. And one of the things we are praying into is that we have a new name now. As a church, we felt like it was a prophetic name, like God gave us this name to speak something over us. And so we said, Lord, what is your vision that would reflect what's behind this name, Hope and Life Church? What's your vision? So we prayed very specifically for direction and for a vision, like, Lord, help us to have a concrete vision. What are, we, what are you calling us to shoot for? And it was amazing, this was an amazing time with the Lord. And uh, we, we came away feeling like the Lord had given us two things, a vision and a word. And so I want to just reveal that to you today. I just want to talk to you about what the Lord talked to us about. We're, we're pretty excited about it. So we have a fresh vision. You know, we have, we have said that our vision statement is sharing Jesus, growing together. And that, that has served us well. But we felt like, Jesus, but you're calling us hope and life now. What, what vision are you calling us to? And so I'm going to unveil what's behind the secret easel here, a brand new vision for our church to see every person find real hope and renewed life in Jesus. To see every person find real hope and renewed life in Jesus. That's pretty sweeping when you see the word every. To see every person find real hope and renewed life in Jesus. So our values are staying the same, and we have them on canvases in the room just to constantly remind us. These are our core values, and we have always had a value. We share Jesus. It was in our mission statement, our vision statement, and one of our values. It's still there. We share Jesus right back there on the wall, but also in practice, and we're still better together. So though we are still are affirming those. We're not like chucking that vision, but instead we ask the Lord to just to help us to be able to clarify and zone in what are you calling us to do and what are you blessing, Jesus? And, and we know that God is blessing real hope and renewed life in our church, in our congregation. Real, real hope in all of life's situations. So when you're struggling, real hope. That's what, we, that's what we found in Jesus, and that is our vision for you, to have real hope. Uh, real hope that your whole family would put their faith in Jesus. Your whole family. Even that one that just seems so opposed. We have real hope that your whole family put their, put their faith in Jesus. We have real hope that your prayers would be answered. I have, I, I don't know how or where I got this, this thought, but I, I feel like the Lord dropped a thought into my, my mind a couple weeks ago, and I just keep, keep coming back to this. We don't look at our circumstances and then, and then define our faith by our circumstances. We start with our faith in God based on his word, and we look through that filter at all of our circumstances. And we continually say, but God. I, I know this is going on in my life, but God. But I know God answers prayer, but I know God has the answer. I know God is the solution. Even if the solution is holding his hand through it. So I reframe my, my situation by God's word, not the other way around. His word defines what's going on in my life and what's coming up in my life. And that's why we have real hope. And so our vision that we believe is from Jesus is that every one of you that's a part of, of Hope and Life Church, uh, online, in the room, you're a part of Hope and Life Church, that you would experience real hope in Jesus. Yeah. You. You. This is not just a vision for someone else. This is a vision for you. And renewed life. 
not just hope and faith in Jesus, but renewed life. Salvation, you know, is putting your faith in Jesus to, to forgive you of your sins and give you eternal life. That, that is, it is a point in time, and many times people will raise their hand and say, I want to make a decision to follow Jesus today, or you pray at a certain place or at a certain service or with a friend over coffee, but there's a time, there's a point in time where you put your faith in Jesus and you are saved, but... Salvation is also a process. It's a journey, and it just keeps going on and on. You become more like Jesus when you put your faith in him, and you become more like Jesus when you go through life walking with Jesus, and that is renewal of life. It is a continual discovery of and walking out of God's eternal purpose for you. Salvation, it's a point, and it's a process both. And it's a process of renewal. I have been serving the Lord for decades, many, many, many decades. And I feel like I still need to be renewed. My mind needs to be removed, renewed. And, and that's, that's our vision for you and for me, for, for us, that, that your mind would be renewed, that your supportive Christian relationships would be renewed, that your relationship with Jesus would be refreshed and renewed, renewed life. Yes. Not just number of days, but quality of life. Yes. Our vision is to see every person find real hope and renewed life in Jesus, including all the people around us in the Southeast Puget Sound region. And uh, this past Wednesday, we have, uh, every Wednesday night, we have a prayer gathering right in this room, and it's a very powerful and often creative time. And this last Wednesday night, we opened up the door, we propped open the door, and we went out, and we just stood on, on the sidewalk, all of us, uh, along Auburn Way, and we just started praying for everyone who went by. Uh, it was really cool. Uh, one guy rode by on a bicycle really close to us. And we, we were like, oh, Lord, bless, uh, you know, bless him. And we're like, prayed for that guy, prayed for the people driving by. And bless him, Lord. And it was so cool to me. He, he just kind of waved like, thanks, uh, as he was going by. I didn't know, like, I don't know, would, would someone yell at us? Would someone, I don't know. It was great. And we, right over there is just a few blocks away is City Hall. We prayed for City Hall. Right over there, just like about four blocks away as the crow flies, is the Auburn School District. We prayed for them. You know, we're just praying over our city. But as we did, God began to drop impressions in different people's lives. And we came back in. I wasn't planning to do this, but I just asked, did did God speak anything to you while, while you're out there? And just person after person said, I feel like God told me this. Like what one person, I feel like God's heart is, is, uh, is for the brokenhearted around us, that he loves them, that he cares for them. He wants to restore and repair them. So we prayed into that. Such a powerful time because we know we have met hope in life, we have received hope in life, and we have hope in life to offer to everybody around us. So cool. Everybody in our region needs real hope and renewed life in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. I love it. In our prayer retreat, so we, we uh, Pastor Shelley and I, we felt like we got this vision, a renewed, clarified, focused vision, and, and we came away with one word, focus, for our church. So we were praying about our church, focus. And so, wow. That was just so clear. I don't remember a time when we've had that specific and clear of a vision and a word like, wow, God is doing something here. And so our, our mission statement, our vision statement helps us to focus. It, it, it helps us to focus on what Jesus is anointing in this next era of our church life. And it also helps us to say no to some good things that are not the main things in order to accomplish what Jesus has called us to do. In Philippians 3, 13 to 14, an early church leader, Paul, wrote, I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Focus is a biblical idea. <laughs> 
<laughs> comes from God. And for whatever reason, God has said in this season, you need to focus, Hope and Life Church. Let's focus and let's, let's see what God will do through us and in us as we focus on what he's calling us to do. So what are the four main things that we believe that Jesus is calling us to focus on in this next era of our church life? What do we feel called and anointed to do? The first one is weekend worship experiences. Not even just simply worship services, but from the moment someone drives onto our property or they walk on or ride their bicycle on, from the moment people get here, we pray that they would, that they would begin to find hope in Jesus. That they would realize there is, wow, there is something else going on here. This is not just a meeting. This is an experience, an encounter with Almighty God. So we pray that people would encounter God for real, and we pray that they would find a real hope that lifts them up, you and me, as well as others that would come and join us. And so I thought before I just even go on, I would love to acknowledge the people who make our Sunday morning worship experiences happen. And I'm, I've got a couple little categories later that I'm going to come back to. So, so for right now, I'm just going to ask you, would you stand if you're on media team, broadcast team, security, ushers, greeters, or worship band? Would you stand to your feet? If you're ever on those teams, would you stand up? And like, can we just give them some applause and shout and say, thank you? <laughs> Woo! Thank you for making it happen. Thank you for ministering to us. Yes. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for making it possible for everyone who's online right now to hear and to see. I mean, that is amazing. Thank you for serving us. Thank you for being in the lobby and greeting. Thank you for security team watching over us and just making sure everything's okay. And thank you, worship team, for leading us in worship. I mean, it was a, an encounter with God we've already had this morning. I love just this morning the emphasis in the, in the worship songs on faithfulness. God is faithful. And because we even repeated a little, a little bit of that theme through a couple different songs, I begin to remember, yes, God, you have been faithful this way in my life. Yes, God, you've been faithful in our church this way. Wow, that's worship that brings us to the Lord. And we're just so grateful to everyone who makes those things happen. You, you serve us, and we appreciate you so much. Next week, we are starting a brand new series called Encounter. Would you say Encounter? Encounter. encounter. And we're going to look at some practical ways to get yourself in the position to encounter God. Because he is always speaking. He is always knocking on your door. He always wants to be with you. And sometimes we just need to get ourselves in a position to be with him and to, to be able to hear him. So in this series, this is a little bit different one. It's, it's going to, uh, we're at least right now planning to go several weeks. And we have planned something creative for every Sunday morning during this series of messages. So I just want to drop a little seed in your, in your, uh, in your mind for this week. Be on time. Because sometimes something is going to happen. Not every Sunday do we, is, do we start with something different, but there are a, a few Sundays in there we're planning to start with something very different, and it starts at 1030, all right? So I just don't want you to miss it. That, that's all. So just be sure, check the kids in early, and get in here, because you don't want to miss one little thing. Ooh, I can't wait to see how everything works out. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> So um, we are focusing on weekend worship experiences, and we're focusing on discipleship. Discipleship is apprenticing people with Jesus. It, it, it is being his apprentice. I, I read a great definition of what a Christian disciple is. A disciple or discipleship it, uh, develops a person who puts Jesus first, obeys the Lord, produces good fruit, loves others, and makes more disciples. That's what a disciple is. A disciple is a person who puts Jesus first, obeys the Lord, produces good fruit, loves others, and makes more disciples. Now, it's possible for you or me, even if you regularly attend church services every week, to not be a disciple of Jesus or to not be growing or progressing. 
I, I can tell you, I have been, like I said, serving the Lord for many decades. I am still growing. He, he is still working on some stuff in my life, and I'm still yielding more. I, I am still trying to make my, my thoughts line up with the God's word. Like, I am still on a process. I am still being discipled. And we, we want to see you, we have a vision for you to be discipled, to be a follower of Jesus that knows God's word, that is a witness, that puts Jesus first, that, that does all those things, that obeys, that, that actually produces good fruit, uh, fruit of a disciple in your life and loves others unconditionally. Wow. We, we, we have a long ways to go. That's why we're going to keep pressing in. And uh, I, I love what Jesus said, and I, I, I preached on this passage a few weeks ago, but I just the highlights of it in John 15, Jesus said, I am the vine, you're the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Skipping down to verse 7. But if you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. You, that is one of the conditions for your prayers being answered. Yeah. It's remaining. Yeah. It's remaining in Jesus, finding your life, your strength, your sustenance, your nutrients, spiritually speaking, in Jesus. That is one of those things that goes into you may ask for anything, and it will be granted. And I love it. In the NLT, it says, ask for anything you want. How many know as you're discipled, your wants change, right? Your wants change because you're remaining in him. Jesus said, when you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. They're like the, the bumper rails that if your life starts going off, you start obeying his commandments, you, it helps you remember to remain in him. And then, and then this is my commandment. What, what does he want us to do? Love each other. Same way I loved you. That's what Jesus said. So our hope and life vision is, is renewed life in Jesus, and that happens through discipleship. All of us continually need to be renewed. So we're focusing on a couple different ways uh, this fall, uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, some tools for discipleship, online, online um, courses and groups, groups and online courses. Those two things we're focusing on. We have Hope and Life groups for adults, for youth on Sunday nights, for kids. And uh, the kids, kids group on Sunday night we call Kids Club. So fun. The adults, we, we've hinted a little bit about this, but in uh, we, this, this fall in particular, we're going through the Bible study, The Chosen. Now, when you, when you um, watch The Chosen TV show or series, you, um, you you think, well, it's about Jesus and it's about whom he chose. But do you realize that if you're a follower in Jesus, you are chosen? And so this, this is a Bible study about how you are chosen and what it means for you to be chosen. It's not so much just a Bible study to say, what happened in the episode? Did this happen? Did that happen? It's not, it's not that. It's just sort of inspired by and launched by, um, uh, like they may refer in lesson one to some things that happened in lesson one, uh, in uh, uh, episode one. But it's things like this. You are cherished. There's a whole lesson on how you are cherished by God. There's a whole lesson on how you are a witness. And, and just a bunch of lessons like that. I'm just so pumped about this group study that we're doing this year. I, I, I love it. Um, our group's ministry is structured a little bit differently this year. So some of the assumptions you have about it may uh, may not still be accurate. So I encourage you to come to tonight, to Fiesta Night, to hear about that. And in fact, the first groups start this Wednesday, like in, in a few days. And so like we, we got to get dialed up. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's find out tonight at Fiesta Night what we got to do. Get signed up. Get your book because we, we want to be prepared. Uh, and uh, Pastor Shelley, she said she'll be in the lobby today right for service. So I encourage you to take the opportunity to have your life renewed through our main discipleship tool, groups. Does that make sense? Yeah. Groups is not just like, oh, it's a thing, like it's an activity. Are we going to go for ice cream today? Are we going to go to groups? It's, it's not like that. 
It is a way to intentionally put yourself in a process to move forward in your faith, to have your life renewed. It's, uh, if you don't put in that intentionality and that focus, it may not happen, at least not at the same speed uh, as if you would put yourself in a, a, a setting to be discipled. So tonight, not only are you going to hear about how, what's different in, and, and I think there's a couple major changes in how we're doing groups this year, and I'm, and I'm excited about it. Uh, not only are you going to hear about all that, but you're also going to eat some tacos. So I think that's a great thing. That is hashtag worth it. Come on. Let's go. Who does not love tacos and other stuff that goes with it? Um, next week, we are starting, and this is, you can't see this print from where you are, I'm sure. It's a little teeny print. But we are starting, <clears throat> we're launching our first online course for discipleship. And it's called Following Jesus. And I just really want to encourage you to take this course if you are newer in your faith, say a couple years or less that, that you've been following Jesus. I encourage you to go through this so that there are no holes in your discipleship. And, and let us just encourage you, uh, uh, tell you the why behind some of the things that, that Christians do, and even maybe expose you to some things that Christians do, do that you're, you're not even aware of yet. Uh, this is going to be an encouraging course. And the cool thing is you can take this at any time, 24-7, that works for you. And Pastor Christian's going to be helping us uh, to be able to just uh, uh, shepherd you and, and help you to be discipled through this and, uh, and other ways. We're really, really excited about following Jesus. So we have some new stuff, some fresh things happening this fall as we focus. And I love it. Well, we actually have another in the pipeline. I'm not even going to tell you the title of it yet, but another, another online course for kind of aimed at a different group of people for a different reason. That's coming a little bit later this fall. I love it. We're going, man, we got, we got clarity. We got focus. We're going somewhere. We're doing it. And I'm so glad you're a part at this time. So we are focusing on weekend worship experiences, on discipleship, and on kids. This is nothing, uh, this, this part is not a surprise to you. If you've been around for a while, you know that kids is a major focus for us because Jesus anoints us in that area. I, for some reason, he, it, he just draws families and kids to us, and, and we've been able to have a great ministry. And we believe that if we today can help kids put their faith in Jesus, if we can teach them today how to remain in Jesus, that our future is going to look very different. Yeah. I, I picture and envision a time in our city and in our region when our high schools and colleges look like the kingdom of God. Amen. So as I think about our colleges right now, we're not there, we're not there yet. Okay? We're, we're not quite, quite there yet. And what would happen if we have a generation that is raised up following Jesus and remaining in him? When they get to high school, they're going to be bringing the kingdom of God there. Yeah. When they get to college, to Green River or, or Highline or whatever college, Pierce, uh, all, all around us, they're going to be changing that college. I, I envision marriages that are, and families that are built on the hope and life of Jesus. Yeah. Wow, what a difference. And that's why we believe it's so important that we are helping kids to put their faith in Jesus now. Man, what God wants to do in us and through us. And so here's another group of people I'd love to just uh, ask you. If you serve on the kids team, kids church, nursery, if you ever rotate through those teams uh, on Sunday morning, would you stand to your feet? And we just want to give you some applause right now. <laughs> Woo! Yay, good job, you guys. We appreciate you. And of course, as they say, there's a whole nother team serving right now in Kids Church and Nursery. Man, we appreciate you guys so much. I appreciate it because I know that you are bringing love to kids. And when kids' first experience with church is love and they find Jesus, man, that sets them up to follow Jesus their whole life. And I, I just believe we are, we are and, and you, our kids team, you are sparing kids a lifetime of hurt. 
from, from wandering, that comes from wandering away from Jesus. Man, that's so good. So worship experiences, discipleship, kids, and the last one is outreach. Focusing on these four things as a church for our next era. We, I've already said it in this message, people everywhere need real hope and renewed life. They need Jesus. And so we share Jesus. That's one of our values individually uh, at, at work, in your neighborhood, at the bank, at, at the store. We share Jesus at school. We share Jesus. But we also, beyond just individually, we, sh- we share Jesus together on big outreach events. And so we're going to focus on outreaches that offer hope and life. Okay, so did you hear that? That is a clarifying thing. That helps us to say no to certain kinds of outreaches that are good, but not what we're called to do. We are called to bring hope and life to people. So our outreaches are going to have the potential for that. So especially to kids and families. That's been our sweet spot. And, and we feel like God is still uh, uh, anointing that. So the next two uh, big outreaches that are coming up this fall or the, the City Harvest Festival slash Trunk or Treat that happens at the park. And I was so encouraged at Kids Day a, a couple months ago, we handed out hundreds of invitations to our church. And we're going to do that again uh, at uh, the, the Saturday before Halloween. We're going to go to the park and uh, participate with the city and just invite people to come and find hope and life in Jesus. And then uh, we're gearing up already again for our Christmas gift drive. We, we uh, cooperate and, and collaborate with counselors at, at several of the Auburn School District elementary schools. We bless all the kids in the families that they, uh, that they identify to us as having a, a big need with, with practical needs. And then when, when they come here to pick up those, those things, we pray for them. We give them a Bible. We encourage them. We, we love them. We offer hope and life to them. And we'll be talking more about that as the, as the fall goes on. So, but I would love to, to just recognize you and honor you. If you have served at last year's Christmas gift drive or at the kids' carnival we did at Easter or, or kids' day or VBS or beach party, if you served at those kids' outreach events, would you stand to your feet right where you are right now? We want to just say big thank you. Good job. Yay. Thank you for serving. Thank you for reaching out. Thank you for offering hope and life. Good job. Wouldn't it be cool if at one of our outreach events this year was the future pastor of Hope and Life Church? You know, he's a kid now. She's a kid now. Uh, say in, in uh, 15 years or something, 20 years, they're the new pastor because we reached out to them, because you reached out to them. That is awesome, and that's the kind of thing that God does. Our future, our our vision rather, is to see every person find real hope and renewed life in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Why don't you stand to your feet, and let's pray for our church, and it's fine to applaud for Jesus. Woo, Jesus, we love you. And for just a few moments, online or in the room, would you lift up your voice for our church, for this next season, for renewed vision, for hope and life that we could offer to others, and for discipleship, for, for all those things we just talked about. What do you remember? What, what like, touches your heart? Would you out loud, I'm going to just not, not, not pray out loud for a moment. Would you out loud just lift up a prayer for our church? Let's go. Let's pray. Would you lift up your voice nice and loud? Let's, let's just pray with faith. Praise you, Lord God, for who you are. I thank you for clarifying your vision. I thank you, Lord God, for everything you've done in us. I thank you for everything you're going to do. I thank you that you are not done with us. I thank you've got good plans for us. I thank you, Lord, for clarifying. I thank you for helping us to say no. Lord God, I thank you for giving us hope and life to offer. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, for healing uh, of people, for calling the kids uh, recently in kids' church. Lord, thank you. I praise you, Lord God. I praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for just clarifying vision for us, Lord. I thank you for inspiring us. I thank you for what you've already done. Uh, I thank you for what you're going to do. Uh, I, I thank you, Lord. Uh, a week ago, we prayed for Pastor Tori on uh, at Wednesday prayer gathering. She had had headaches for weeks. You instantly healed her, and the headache has stayed away. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Lord, I thank you. You are the God who answers prayer. Lord, I thank you for recently calling several kids in our kids' church to full-time ministry. Lord, you, have, you, you gave some kids in our ministry a call to missionary, a call to pastor, a call, there were a couple, a call to worship pastor. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in our church. Thank you, Lord. All these things assure us that we have a future, that we have a hope. Your plans for us as a church are to prosper us, not to harm us. You have given us a hope and a future. We praise you, Jesus. And Lord, I pray that the best years of our church are ahead. Lord, I pray for our best seasons of ministry are ahead. That you would eclipse all the wonderful things you've already done. That you would help us to do greater things, as you talked about in John 10. Lord God, help us to do greater things, Lord God, because we're on mission for you. Lord, we just call forth people around us who don't yet have a church, have not yet experienced your real hope and renewed life. Lord, I, I call them forth, and we just agree right now in prayer that they would come, put their faith in Jesus, find you, be renewed, be, re be discipled, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you would expand us. I pray that we would bear fruit because we're remaining in you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless Hope and Life Church, Lord. Bless Hope and Life Church. Thank you, Jesus. With your head still bowed, I want to just give you an invitation to put your faith in Jesus. Maybe you haven't yet done that. Or maybe you did when you were a kid or earlier, and you've kind of wandered away, and Jesus has not been the focus of your life. I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus today. How do you do that? Turn away from your sins. Turn your life over to Jesus and let him lead. In other words, follow him. Become his apprentice. And online or in the room, if, you, if you're ready to do that today, you're coming back to Jesus or you're putting your faith in Jesus for the first time, would you just shoot your hand up right now? And that would be a signal to me, pastor, pray for me because I'm making that decision right now. In the room, online, online, I know I can't see you, but God can. And I encourage you, lift your hand right where you are. And that's okay. And Lord, I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you would give us many, many people who, as we gather, would put their faith in Jesus. And, and we would turn away from our sins. We would acknowledge them. And we would acknowledge our need for you. Lord, I pray that, that many, many more people would come and, and um, give their lives over to you and follow you, Lord God. Lord, I pray for that. I, I pray every time we gather and every time we scatter, that we would share the, the hope and life we've found in you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Future is bright, amen? amen? Amen. Amen. Well, you know what? I think I think we should say it together. What do you think? I think we should? All right, everyone talk with me. So our mission statement as a church is to see every person find real hope and renewed life in Jesus. Amen. Amen. And may we do that. May we accomplish God's vision for us with the same unity and agreement that we just showed right now. Amen. We're a church. We are God's people, God's body moving forward as one. Amen. Amen. All right. At this time, the ushers are going to come down the aisles to pick up any of those connect cards you may have. And then also, so tonight is fiesta night. Do not forget. I want to see every single one of you there. <laughs> come on down. But to prepare for that, we need a few of you, quite a few of you, to stay after. We're just going to be setting up some tables in here. So if some strong guys, strong women, weak women, weak men, come stay. Help us set up. We could use your help. All right, we'll see you next week. God bless.